Hi, I'm here today to discuss the snare drum, which is one of the most easily recognizable and most famous of all the percussion instruments. It's also the instrument that most percussionists first get to learn, and it's the first drum that I ever played. And I was always very, very excited by um, the kind of sound it makes, which comes from a, a simple but brilliant mechanism called the snare, which runs across the bottom head of the instrument, and it's operated here by these levers. In this instance, on this drum, which has a wooden shell, and a metal hoop, and a natural head, we have three different levers, and they all make a slightly different impression on the drum. So now you can hear it with the snares off, so this is no snares at all. And you can hear it has that ringy sound, it's that slightly more open sound. But now we're going to shut the snares on one by one. Here's the first one. Next one. Just tightening up that little more kind of ring to the tone. And now finally the third one. This instrument you see here is a modern descendant of probably the military drums that were used by armies and, you know, frankly, and in, in battles, etc. Uh, but it's made, made its way into classical music through composers such as uh, Hector Berlioz, um, and then on through a lot of French composers famously wrote for the drum widely and very, very beautifully, people like uh, Maurice Ravel, and then certainly a lot of the Russian composers, people like Prokofiev, Shostakovich, Rimsky-Korsakov as well, back in the day. They all wrote fantastic and famous parts for the snare drum, some of which I'll discuss with you later. So the snare drum is now off the stand, and I uh, just want to give you a little tour of it. So there you can see there's the playing site, there's the snare mechanism. This is called the shell, right here. This one's made of wood, although you can have ones made of all kinds of different metals as well. And then here, oh, you can hear it buzzing. Hello. <laughs> this is the snare mechanism, and this is uh, uh, where the vibrations happen. You can hear it reacting to my voice that give the snare that buzzy sound. That's what happens underneath the more familiar playing side. You might be wondering, well, is it possible to tune it? Is there a way for the player to have some kind of input as to how the instrument might be tuned? And indeed there is. This is the humble drum key, but very, very important for uh, getting the instrument the way you want it as, as, as an individual player. There are a series of pegs around the top and bottom hoop of the drum, and you simply apply the drum key and then... Certainly crank it up, and then tune it down again. And then you go around all the pegs and line things up and make things work the way you want. The way I like it is, is quite a tight uh, top head, and the bottom head just slightly looser. And so I wanted to share with you some of the very famous music written for this instrument by famous composers. Very famously, Ravel's Bolero. Um, is really a, a sort of feature for the snare drum and has this very intoxicating rhythm which goes throughout the whole piece. Fast forward to the end of the piece and you really are wailing on this thing when the music is huge and very, very powerful. And another composer that wrote widely for the snare drum in a very different way was Dmitry Shostakovich. And I absolutely love his snare drum writing. Most of his symphonies have significant snare drum parts, but none more so than the 10th symphony, where in the second movement, it's more or less a, a, a mini concerto for the snare drum. And you get to play these wonderful riffs, such as these ones. It's these kinds of riffs, really, really exciting and very Shostakovich-centered uh, music for the snare drum. 